What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of PSR. As always, it is a joy to have you with me right now on this corner of the internet together. We can just uh, do a little jazz hands, touch fingers through the screen. What are we doing today? Well, we are reviewing another printer. Yes, something about 3D printing. Oh my gosh, feels like it's been a while and I really do appreciate your patience with a lot of the printing content. I did post my review of the DD43X. I think you guys enjoyed that. And there's going to be more printing content coming soon. I want you guys to let me know what you wanna see going forward with regards to that content. So what's the 3D printer we are reviewing today? Well, it is the Ender 3 S1 Pro. Yes, it's a pro professional. And we're gonna be doing a review of it today. But first, I've gotta thank the new channel sponsor for PSR, and that is Aves Engineering, also known as Aves Rails. Aves is mega-based because they are sponsoring this channel. I was without a sponsor, and they decided, you know what, we really love what you're doing, and they started to sponsor me. But also, they make all sorts of components for your favorite DIY projects. And by DIY, Maybe we're talking a little mac and cheese, making mac and cheese with a special pink mac upper. This is one that they made for me and it is absolutely gorgeous. Just beautiful. And my favorite color, of course, pink. They also do a fair amount of Glock stuff. So if you're interested in DIY stuff, I would never, ever, ever check out Aves on Instagram right here or use your favorite search engine to search them up. In addition to that, I would never ever suggest that you use the code PSR for 10% off your entire order from Aves. Big shout out and big thank you to Aves for sponsoring this channel. So let's talk about this printer. The Ender 3 S1 Pro is essentially an Ender 3 on steroids. They sent me this a while ago, and so I've kind of been reviewing it over the past few months. It is a little bit older, but you can get it now. It's a flash sale. I'm, I'm not sure if it'll be available by the time this video comes out, but the flash sale right now has it for sale for 307 bucks, which is honestly a great deal. I will put links to the Creality site in my description here, as well as the Amazon affiliate link. You can choose whichever one you want. I also have links to my filament in the description which I use, which is Polymaker. So what does the Ender 3 S1 Pro offer in addition to some of their lower level models like the Ender 3 V2 or the Ender 3 S1? Well, the Ender 3 S1 Pro offers 300 degree Celsius hot end, which is probably the biggest thing, the biggest change, very capable hot end that allows you to print TPU, carbon fiber nylon, you know, glass filled nylons, things that take a lot higher temperature to print. And when it comes to TPU, you usually need a direct drive extruder. It's got a Sprite full metal dual gear direct drive extruder, and that is gonna allow you to print those filaments. In addition to that, it's got a really awesome Creality CR Touch automatic bed level system and it's got a metal little probe yes we're talking probes Ford probe this is a metal probe that measures the level of the bed so that you don't have to do it yourself manually which I think a lot of people can relate to can be a little bit difficult this does it for you and boy does it do it well in my opinion in addition to that you get a really awesome lcd display this is so much better than the ender 3 original and ender 3 v2 even because it's got this whole brand new ui which is super easy to use and i just really like the way it's set up and last but not least, and probably most importantly, for a lot of people just getting into the hobby, this is so easy to assemble compared to the Ender 3 V2 or the other Ender 3s that come before it. It is just a few bolts and you are ready to go. Another small thing that it offers is it's got this LED light bar on the top, which is kind of cool. It doesn't serve much of a purpose, but if you're working in a dimly lit area, it does provide a perfect amount of light down on that bed. So what was the setup like? Like I said earlier, it is really, really easy. And I probably assembled it in maybe 20 to 25 minutes and I was going pretty slow. The gantry is all set up together. You just put on the filament holder and the light and a couple other small things and you are in business. As far as the build quality goes, I had no issues when it comes to putting it together and feeling like the printer was gonna be solid. And as long as you carefully tighten up each of the bolts, make sure everything's tightened up, you should be good to go and not run to any problems with anything being loose 
or things like that. Just like the Ender 3, you can tighten the belts very easily. It's got knobs for that. One thing that was really noticeable when I put it together was the wires coming up to the hot end are all in one single cable. It's got this like kind of netting around it and it just makes it a lot easier, a lot less complicated. And the, the way that it clips on to the hot end is also simplified. They've just made this whole printer much more accessible for people just getting into the hobby because of how simple it is to put together. Now, if you want to learn more about kind of how the machine works and you want to get into kind of the nitty gritty of assembling it, I would still recommend the Ender 3 V2, which is probably even more highly discounted at this point if they still sell it. I'm sure you can still find it because you can still find the original Ender 3 for sale because that process of assembling it is much more detailed. It's much more complicated. However, it's not overly difficult, but you will get your hands-on experience in kind of assembling it and learning kind of how it's all put together. But for those who are just kind of like, I don't know anything about this. I'm really intimidated by it. This is a perfect printer to get because it is super easy to put together. Like I said, six steps, and it's basically, it's like 96% pre-made. So what was it like to print with? Well, I first started out, as I always do, with what's on the SD card, which they include in the box. This little cute kitten. Yes, it's the Creality kitten. We're very familiar with this, and it came out really great. I had no issues with it. It is a really good, really clean looking print. So that came straight off the G code of the SD card that was included. I just made sure the bed was leveled and there I went and got this thing. One thing I forgot to mention is the bed, which is a PEI sheet, which is really great. It's a magnetic piece of metal basically that's coated and it's got this really great texture to it. Makes it super easy to take off the bed, pop it off and then you kind of bend it and then the print comes right off. So no more taking a chisel, trying to get the print off if you have really good bed adhesion. This just makes it so much easier and you get this really nice texture on the bottom of your prints, which I think is great. This is a Valentino Rossi, the greatest motorcycle rider of all time, by the way. Number 46 cookie cutter, which I have right here. In addition to that, I printed this little wall art. This is a Kawasaki Ninja 400. If you're not aware, I do have a second YouTube channel where I review motorcycles. If you wanna check that out, I will link it in the description. It's called Print, Shift, Repeat. If you want more content, check that out. If you're into motorcycles or anything motorsports related, more content coming on that soon. But printed this, thought it came out pretty good. Honestly, compared to any other printer, I had the least amount of tinkering and issues with this printer. I plugged it in, I put my settings in for my normal heavy duty prints for my other printer, and I just kind of like transferred it over. Everything just came out so solid. I had no issues. It was like dialed from the very beginning. Now, getting to the good stuff. This right here is one of the prints that I printed on it. One of the uh, load bearing prints. This is the DD43X. I did a review of this on the channel. Definitely check that out if you haven't watched it yet. What do we have? We got some Aves rails in here. Shouts out to Aves. This print came together really nicely. The way that the frame was designed was to have a texture in between the stippling. The way that this printer handled it was perfect. As far as dimensionally, I didn't have any issues. I did have to file out the magwell a bit, which, you know, usually sometimes that happens. It really ran awesome. And if you wanna check out the video on it, please check it out. I'm gonna take a quick pause right now to thank today's video sponsor. That is Manufacture de Arms et Carillon de Floride. Also known as MAF, wind chimes. Yes, we love us some wind chimes. Let your imagination run wild. Hear the sounds of nature through the chimes. What might you use those chimes for? Well, that's of course up to you, but you could use them for maybe a Mr. Pistol 5 kit, or maybe even a TAC-9 or Plastikov. Those are certainly possibilities, but they're wind chimes. And right now, I would never suggest for you to use the code PSR for 10% off at MAF. Back to the rest of the review. I just printed with PLA on this machine, and I know I've been saying for a long time, I really wanna print with nylon. It can be challenging without an enclosure to print with nylon. However, Creality does make an enclosure for this printer. Well, for any of the Ender printers, anything that can fit in their enclosure. I've had a bit of a tough time with nylons in the past. Layer adhesion without the right amount of heat inside that build chamber can be difficult. So layer adhesion is basically all the different layers of the 3D print, if you're not familiar. Coming together, fusing, that 
creates strength. And if you don't get good layer adhesion, that can be a problem when it comes to load bearing components. I didn't get good proper layer adhesion and it very safely rapidly disassembled in my hand. That will not happen if you're using materials like PLA, a lot easier to print with and a lot easier to get good layer adhesion with. However, there are other printers that come with enclosures such as the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, I believe it's called. Creality sent this one to me for free, so I will just say that, but I may have to, you know, pony up and buy a Bamboo Lab. Not a cheap printer, but also very, very capable printer. But anyway, back to the S1 Pro. One thing that's a huge step above the previous Enders is the Creality touchscreen display. It's so much better. The UI is really good. It allows you to see all of the points where the bed level is happening. And that process is just a lot easier with this printer and this display. It's really easy to set the Z offset when you initially set up the printer, just to make sure that that nozzle doesn't hit the bed. It's a very responsive display, so there's no like lag or anything to it. And the previous Ender 3 V2 that I always use, that actually has a dial on it and the dial can just get annoying. But when you touch things with this, you touch the different buttons on the screen, it's just super easy, not complicated, and it's a big plus in my opinion. So what are my final thoughts about this printer? I really like all of the changes that Creality's made. It's almost like this is kind of what the Ender 3 should have been from the very beginning. I think it's a really great printer for beginners. I know I recently reviewed the Soval SV06 and I thought that was a really great printer for beginners as well, but I think this one's even better because the process of setting it up is even easier. Now with that said, if you wanna get your hands dirty and tinker and kind of build the printer yourself and assemble it yourself, I think the Ender 3 V2 is still a good option, but this does offer a whole lot more features like the auto bed leveling, which is a game changer, the best auto bed leveling system that I've experienced in any of these kinds of printers. It's not quite as plug and play as like a Bamboo Lab, for example, but that's a whole different class of printer that costs, you know, $1,200. This, we're talking about $300 right now at the Creality site. Direct drive extruder, the ability to print TPU, ease of use of the bed leveling and this new screen, the hot end, which allows you to print all sorts of different filaments. These are all really welcome additions and I wish that these would have been there from the very beginning. This is my main printer right now. I am going to be printing some very fun projects coming up on this thing and I trust it will keep running and keep making great prints for all of those fun projects. If you are on the fence about getting a 3D printer and you're thinking, man, I don't know, it seems like a lot, it seems kind of complicated, I would rethink that position A and B, I would get this printer because it is for 300 bucks, so much printer. If you're feeling like you don't want to, you know, jump into like a hugely expensive printer to start and then maybe you don't like it at the very least, you know, you get into this and maybe it's not all it's cracked up to be in your, in your eyes or maybe you'd love it. This will keep you interested and keep you going and can make all of the fun projects that I make very easily for a long time. As far as downsides go to this printer, I wouldn't really even call it a downside. It just, I wish that it was an enclosed printer. Now, Creality does make an enclosed printer that's kind of a competitor to the Bamboo Lab and stuff, but this isn't meant to be a competitor to the Bamboo Lab. It's far less expensive. It's not really meant to do those things that the Bamboo Lab does. The LED bar on the top, it would be cool if it had like some kind of RGB function. Cause you know what? I like my bisexual lighting. It would be really cool if we had some bisexual lighting from the LED, like, like let's make that RGB, Creality, come on. That's a small complaint though. For me, Creality is still the leader in making 3D printing accessible for consumers. I would never ever check out the guide by Control Pew, by the way, to learn more about 3D printing and fun projects. Well, that's gonna be it, you guys. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to see some particular content related to 3D printing from me, whether it be reviews or, you know, fun other projects, leave it in the comments. Tell me what you want me to make. Tell me what you want me to review. Tell me what you're interested in. I hope you have a wonderful day and I wanna thank you again for watching and tuning in. It is as always a joy to have you. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.